Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Ooh. Game number three here on the Path to LCS channel. DK Crew, Cincinnati Fear, only one that can keep their tournament dreams alive here. You've got DK Crew, the fan favorites, the Banana Slammas for Cincinnati Fear, who have been putting on a clinic in this series, at least in game one, and they had a small little comeback in game two. So they are a very strong force with, you know, no doubt about it. So it is going to be an insanely exciting game three that we have on our hands. I I, I said well, when we took a break, I was just like, I want to take a breath, you know, I want to breathe a little bit. I did some breathing exercises. I got up, I stretched, I hydrated, I drank nice. water. I thought it was good. I thought it was good, Dylan. And and now I'm back here and my heart rate is up again. <laughs> like, oh, I'm not no. even in the game, man. Like this is so intense. And that was a really solid game number two from DK Crew. It really was, right? It, they were up at least six or 7,000 gold for the majority of that game ever since like 10 minutes into the game. But it did feel like until that last team fight, that there was always a hope for Cincinnati fear, right? There was always an inkling of a possibility that they could actually make their way back into this game. And and this is really one of the moments where it felt like it was gonna turn around, right? We've got this replay coming up here and this is the one where Dragoon, he, he went ham, right? He played so well in that fight, but DK Crew just disengaged it and Evan Arell was able to turn it around, which really did save the game for them, in my opinion, because otherwise we're just looking at a completely different game too. Yeah, and it was Evan Arell, it was Savage, it was Short Race, it was Lawrence, it was Clyde, all five members coming together to really create this advantage, to make sure that the lead is built for themselves. They had the foundation there. It looked shaky, like you said, at a moment there. And yet again, I feel like we're going into this game. I want to talk about one thing to hype up for fear. Dragoon is having an amazing series. Yes. You've got to, we're, we've got to keep our eyes peeled on Dragoon and what he's doing inside this game three. Yeah, I think you need to get Dragoon a comfort champion and you need to play towards Dragoon because he has been your rock this series. And not only this series, but this entire proving ground so far. He has just been such a consistent, strong force for this team and i do think game three is going to largely hinge on whether or not he can get ahead again and whether or not the rest of his team specifically trickster can kind of pick up the slack from game two they, they didn't really play up to their regular selves and i think that trickster probably going a different direction with this champion pick and then also going to play a little bit more safe in this game well even then it's also just like it's an idea of like trickster Tritzer got found in a rough situation. We we hyped up the glories of Olaf, but there's also a massive downfall, and that pit is deep as can be, right? Yeah. Like, you get behind on Olaf, all of a sudden, you you pop Ragnarok, and you're like, wow, those defensive stats that I got are gone. I'm dead. Okay, cool. Can't kill anybody, and I just get dropped, so... I feel like there's a couple things that they're definitely changing drafts. Cincinnati Fear are over here on the blue side still. DK Crew on the red see what we got here as see what adaptations might come in the band phase yeah we've got three games of the same sides for both teams right this mm -hmm. is the third game of blue side for fear this is the third game of red side for tk crew and i don't expect the bands to be very much different from game two senna band for evan rl karthus band for shorter race gwen band for dragoon um these are the kind of bands that i'm fully fully expecting to see and then it really is going to come down to what other picks are going to show their face within this series there's the lilia ban as well it really is unfolding there's no way we get a salty run back right uh i i feel like maybe it was some adaptations made right like I, dk crew doesn't have to change anything on what they banned like oh, they, they're well, like we oh yeah we've solved you but oh there's the adaptation no monkey business in this game yeah, no Wukong, DK Crew in shambles, no bananas for them. There's the Talia ban, still sticking with that. And th this opens up some interesting first pick options. Um, Lucian is an option. Viego is a potential option. Y you could really go for a different direction. Tristana, something that they've picked. Victor is another champion this series. 
We saw Savage play very well in it game two. Blaze carried on it in game one. So I do like this Victor first pick adaptation, but Savage has a deep pool. He can go for something like a Zoe. He can go for something to try and punish it. A Vigar is what he picked in game one and try to really punish that Victor. Yeah, uh, but hey, look, shorter. <laughs> you got Evan RL back on the Callista yet again. And the answer to come about between these two is give me Gangplank for DK Crew. Yeah, Gangplank locked in for Lawrence. It is a champion that Lawrence has definitely had experience on within the amateur space. And the Callista makes perfect sense, right? Evan RL piloted that to perfection in the last game. We saw that Callista plus Renata combo very 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 strong within game number two and it was large part of the reason that they were able to win so here comes the response here please we get it we got Dragoon it on darius oh wow <laughs> that is exciting man you always love to see not one tricks but former one tricks get their champion because there are so many question marks that arise how much practice does dragoon still have on darius does he play it in scrims how much does he play it in solo queue? All of these questions, uh, you know, come to my mind and it's going to be so much fun because Darius can run over the GP matchup. Yep. To beat the banana, you have to slam of the banana. That is the mindset coming in here. So, and look, I like it. Fear going for it. They're going to comfort. And hey, Dragoon is a player we were highlighting going into game number three. Has performed game number one and game number two admirably. Yet again, it's a Renata. We're going to see, I, I think Sketch is just going to get targeted out here again in this uh, this second ban phase. Yeah, I think there's a pretty decent chance that Sketch gets targeted out here. And it's tough because the the Callista makes it so you don't really want to pick something like a Tristana because Callista can handle that pretty easily. So then it makes me think Sketch may be going a different direction. Ezreal is an option with this team composition, but it's really going to depend what the bans are. I like the Vigar ban because you do have this short range composition that would be, it would be tough to deal with a Savage Vigar here. I think that could slot in very well for TK Crew, so good on them for realizing to ban that. Aphelios ban against Sketch. You were talking about it during our prep. Sketch is pretty dang good at Aphelios. He's got some highlight plays on that champ, so it makes sense to ban it away. Yeah, it is his 1v5 champion, and Sketch was recovering in the last game on that jeans, which was another scary thing, which made us hold our breath. But, ooh, a nocturne for shorter ace is, uh, put Sketch on watch! Yeah, turning off the lights, and I, I do feel like this maybe opens the door for something, yeah, exactly, like yeah. an Ezreal this game, because so many picks have been banned away, and Ezreal can deal with the Nocturne better than most other AD carries can. Now it comes down to what support you pair it with. Flux is known for enchanters, yeah. Karma makes perfect sense this game, and now it's up to DK Crew to round out their composition with a mid laner, and Savage is known for his Zoe, would not surprise me at all to lock it in. Yeah, this is Savage going back to something that they are phenomenal at. We've seen them. They're a very prolific uh, Zoe player. Here it is. We get to see it. So, yeah, man, that's a lot of damage. <laughs> that is a lot. Honestly, both teams. There's yeah. really no like tanks or CC. It's just damage. It yeah. really, it's just raw damage from both sides. It's going to be who can nuke the other person first. And we are playing on durability patch. So it's going to be uh, fascinating to see, you know, what sort of uh, scenarios can unfold because of the innate, you know, uh, more tankiness for these champions. I do think both teams, we've been saying it all day. I think both teams are comfortable with their drafts. I think Cincinnati Fear got champions that they're pretty good on. Trickster, good on Viego. Dragoon, obviously known for his Darius. Blaze has been performing super well on Victor this tournament. And then Sketch and Plux playing Comfort. But over on DK Crew's side, Lawrence on his GP, mm -hmm. Savage on his Zoe, Evan RL, Clyde running back their same bot lane. And of course, Shorter Ace has practice on Nocturne. And even if he didn't have too much practice, Nocturne's pretty easy for these experienced junglers to pilot. Yeah, I actually am very curious too because this does this could be a nice answer into something like the the Victor and the Ezreal that are trying to stand back. Not too could be a great answer. Turn out the lights, go in there, and just assassinate one of them. And the question for me going into this game is I look at Shorter Ace and I'm like, wow, this could be a cool pick for Shorter Ace to be able to find some creative ways to engage or take out some priority targets. 
Trickster's somebody I keep my eyes on because Trickster is a good jungler, but has not had a great series here, and it's been a lot yeah. of shorter ace keeping tabs on. Yeah, I, I do agree with that. I think Trickster, one of the better amateur junglers, a younger player to this space, and he has not had a series that lives up to his potential, right? Game one, Fear won the game, but it was not really because of Trickster's Viego, right? It was largely on the back of Sketch and Dragoon. Game two, Trickster was one of the reasons that they fell so far behind to begin with because of a couple of plays that he made. So this game, we're looking for him to have a bounce back. He's got very, very good Viego pop-off potential, but let's get into game three and see what happens. We're in game number three. It is do or die. One story continues and another one closes here today in the first qualifier as one of these two teams are going to find themselves moving on. Cincinnati Fear on blue side, DK Crew on the red. All of the players in this game have experience in this kind of scenario, right? We're looking at 10 players who have played in so many combined amateur and collegiate matches. They've been here before. They know what it takes back against the wall tournament lives on the line to make that final push across the line. So it really is going to come down to what sort of a game are we going to get in game three? I expect these teams to actually play a little bit more conserved than we've seen them play so far. Because game three, a lot of times you see players that are afraid to make mistakes, right? They don't want to be the one that loses the series for the team. So they farm up, they play for later on team fights. And I think if that happens, it's a fear focused game. Oh, oh no, Evan. <sighs> Okay, it's Clyde? So, it's so no. close. Okay. okay. Okay, there we go. Clyde joins him. That could have been really bad. That scared me. Um, I do want to bring up, in terms of Keystone, something interesting. Trickster's opted for the uh, the Presti attack here instead of the Conqueror that we saw him take in the uh, the last time he pl piloted Vieco. Yeah, that is a good point. A little bit of extra burst damage helps you blow up that Nocturne as well. Gives you a stronger 2v2. It is going to be interesting to track whether or not that rune choice actually makes a, a tangible difference in these fights. My eye here in this game is largely on the mid lane, because I think Blaze and Savage have both had pretty solid series for the most part. And this matchup is quite volatile. And the fact that, you know, Savage can set up for ganks onto Blaze. Blaze has no cleanse. But on the flip side, I think that Blaze can actually poke Savage out of lane, right? That's why we see the Corrupting Potion start for Savage. So he can play more offensive. He can poke out Blaze. But we're going to have to see what happens here. Absolutely. MNRL. Getting a couple spears chunked into him, but level two advantage goes over to the Ezreal Karma lane. To nobody's surprise, Karma is so hard to be able to get an advantage over inside that laning phase. That damage is ruthless as we'll see them just get this nice shove in. Nothing too crazy across the map has happened just yet. Yeah, shorter race pathing towards the top side shows me that he's maybe looking for a play under Dragoon. Or he realizes that his bot lane is going to get pushed in, and he wants to just get one of the two crabs, right? Because if his bot lane is getting pushed in and he paths bottom, very realistic possibility that he's forced out of his own jungle and zoned away from either one or both crabs. So smart pathing to path topside realizes that he's just going to cut his losses, except that his bot lane is going to get pushed in, going to get poked down, and he's going to play around this GP who has Ignite and who has the potential to maybe kill Dragoon. It's a hard matchup, man. Uh, you can see the passive was almost actually fully stacked there. Uh, and Dragoon has Flash and Ghost. So he's just going to run at you every single chance he gets. And Trickster is down here at bot side because Evan is so incredibly low. He's going to try and recall. Will he be able to get it? Trickster can't show himself. There he goes. He's going for it. Oh. Great stop on the base. Yeah, this is a great stop on the base. Trickster is still here. He is making sure that Evan RL doesn't have a way to escape right now. Fly doing a great job <gasps> trying to block the stun. A flash comes out, and this is the play you were looking for. Evan RL can't secure it, and that is going to be a kill. First blood. They're looking to make it more. No than way! Will. Sketch gets the kill, and it's two kills for Cincinnati Fear in the bot lane. We said that Trickster had to make up for game one and game two. And I think he did more than that with that play right there. This is so perfect. At first, I thought he was just going to stop the base. And he was going to leave. And he was just going to cut his losses. Okay, Evan is going to miss away because of what I did. But look at this. He keeps him on a leash. The flash W to get over the top of Clyde, who's trying to body block. 
steals the body, and he just gets so much burst damage into Clyde that I don't think Clyde was expecting, because Clyde doesn't flash. Look at all this damage that comes through there. Boom! Just pops him. And that's two kills to Viego, or excuse me, one kill to Viego, one kill to the Ezreal. That's two treasure hunter stacks, two trickster. And all of a sudden, Cincinnati Fear off to a great start. Fantastic start from them. Able to find that. Okay, crew. Get knocked back a bit here, but they are trying to salvage their losses. But Trickster is here yet again. A nice flash pull. The ghost is there. Lawrence, you have no place to escape, buddy. You are going to find yourself getting dunked down. As the HP burns, Dragoon finds the kill. Is this not just a mirror of what happened last game, but the opposite? We saw Shorter Race last game go bot and get two kills, and then go top and get a kill. In this game, it's Trickster doing the exact same thing to DK Crew, which is fascinating because it shows to me that Trickster has a great mental. He's able to bounce back after a game two loss of really tough game two in the jungle. But Savage may be poking his head down here looking for a dive. They're just trying to zone sketch off of a wave. Trying to pay him back. They said, all right, you took us off of a wave. You killed us there. Let's go ahead and threaten the same bat to you. Shorter Ace, I'm gonna get that level six. You can see Blaze taking a good amount of damage. Has that gravity field forcing the flash from Savage. That's huge, right? Blaze playing with the utmost confidence right there, realizing he has the damage to force that flash. Here's Shorter Ace, but look, here's Trickster again. Again, yeah. he's here. Makes him go to sleep though. Blaze is in a rough situation. The flash forward, and they're able to get it. Trickster, now he's gonna get jumped onto. He doesn't have the ultimate ability, so he's gonna have to dash away. We'll make it out just fine. Lawrence in a tricky spot yet again, has the barrels, but it doesn't matter. Dragoon is looking for kills. He smells blood in the water. That passive is still ticking away, and Lawrence survives to tell the story. Lawrence barely making it out here. He's going to go for this Lawrence. fruit, but here's Trickster. Oh, no, he's caught out. No flash yeah, in the river. Yeah, this is greed equals speed, baby. Lawrence, you didn't want to go for that fruit. You were looking hungry, but now you're just a treat for the opposing team. Maybe a play down here towards the bot side. No, nothing. Oh, Sketch going in. Yeah, lots of damage. The press the attack has been brought. The tether coming in. A Blocks! flash board. He gets him stunned up. He is going to try and see if he can recover one more care, but he can't find it. And Sketch is able to put in the work on this Ezreal. Cincinnati Fear with an amazing bounce back in this game. Trickster's all over the map. Now that Plux and Sketch have this advantage, they're not dropping it. And it's not every day, Travesty, where you see Ezreal beat Callista in lane. But that's exactly what's happening because of Trickster's play earlier on. And look at the gold. Trickster, the furthest end in the game. Sketch, you're scaling AD Carry, who is so safe into Zoe, into Gangplank, into Nocturne. Second most gold in the game. And Dragoon looking for another kill in the top lane. Just a short little trade, though. Yeah, yeah. I mean, what can Lawrence do to stop him, right? <laughs> like, exactly. This is, this is the fearful thing about a Darius lane once it gets out of control. It's two kills, buddy. Like, you, you can't do anything to stop it. You have to pay some respect to the Darius in the top lane. Yes, you certainly do. You've got to pay respect to Dragoon. Not only because it's Dragoon, but because this Darius in this matchup is just so strong. And he's got the two-kill lead. He's got the early-plated steel caps. And like you said, Lawrence cannot really do anything. You're just farming from range now. And at any moment, if Lawrence steps up too far and Dragoon can get a heavy trade, it could be his demise. Nice shield coming in from Plutz to nullify some of that damage. Give a little bit of cushion there. As Fear in complete control of this early game. Dragon? Maybe started by Shorter Race. No, he's looking for an ult mid. Yeah, he's finding it too. But not the Sleepy Trouble Bubble that does not connect. So Shorter Ace doesn't get it, and look at this, Dragoon was just doing popped. this. He's got that ghost, baby, and he is coming in, looking for somebody spooky himself as Trickster secures the kill. So not only is that Herald to Trickster, that's now Dragon tr tr to Trickster, and a kill to Trickster. That's six kills to one. It's a 2,000 gold lead. Dragon over to Fear. Herald over to Fear. Travesty, I'm worried that we're going to see Fear run away with this game. It's a scary proposition for DK Crew fans out there as the members of Cincinnati Fear that do need to get ahead are getting ahead. The people we were asking questions of, can they recover from a series that hasn't gone their way? 
have recovered. You have a 2-0-3 Tritster inside this game. And Viego is not something to mess with. Savage running for his life as Tritster is here to force him off the wave. Savage runs into the arms of Shorter Ace. And we'll stay alive. Savage does make his way out of that one, but... It does feel like DK Crew is just responding to Fierce plays. They're not really making too many proactive plays of their own, and any plays that they do go for are getting turned around on them. We see Trickster. He's going to look for a base quite soon. He's getting close to that mythic item, and as soon as he does go for that base, where is he going to go with that Herald? If I were him, I would probably look to use it down towards the bottom side because I think unlocking Sketch, getting him far ahead, is your best bet. Dragoon is already winning this matchup. He will continue to win this matchup for the foreseeable future. But if you can get the Ezreal unlocked and moving around the map, that's going to mean much more for your team come later on. You can see right now, just has the wave pushing into him. So Dragoon, he's, he's made it very nice and inviting to Lawrence. Wouldn't you want to walk up to this wave right now to get some farm, right? Like you would, you Oh, it looks juicy. There, right? Yeah. That looks great. Look at all this farm over here for you, Lawrence. Lawrence is running back to lane, but will he be able to cash in? Probably not at this current moment in time. Savage trying to do what he can, but look at how Trickster is playing this Viego. Yeah, he's just hovering these lanes, being a nuisance, nullifying any potential play. FNRL is so low. He's yeah, really he's... sticking around here. Shorter Race has ult, but here's Trickster again. Yeah, here we go. Go Berserk. It's going to be the ultimate from Shorter Ace. They're seeing if they can finish off a kill here, and they will. Clyde finishes it off. Nocturne, it's fight for your lifetime. Shorter Ace flashes out, but he was already dead. Shorter Ace taken down. Another one for one. But more importantly, that's Herald used by Trickster. There are only three plates left on this turret. Look at Blaze walking around. Savage doesn't have any teleport. So Blaze is going to zone them off. Maybe even kill Clyde. Uh, yeah, he's, he's just going to get the kill, but Ooh. the Fates call saves the day. As Clyde goes You're back Savage. over. You're Savage. Savage coming around bubble? with an angle on the side. Sleepy Trouble Bubble does connect onto the Ezreal, but Blaze doing a great job body blocking. But now this leads the way, an entryway for Evan RL, and it's a shutdown going over. Savage is not done with you yet. He's looking for more. He's hopping through portals. He's thinking with them. Tricks are coming around onto the plate. The Karma is here as well. The damage is there, and Tricks are trying to get the kill onto Savage. Oh, they, they got Savage it. Savage gets struck. He goes down, can't finish off a kill with the Pope before he drops. And it is still a play in the favor of Cincinnati Fear. Fear giving DK Crew an opportunity to get back into this game because they didn't really track Savage's roam. He was able to walk down, find that bubble onto Sketch who had already burned Arcane Shift. They get that shutdown on to Sketch. And sure, it is a play in Cincinnati Fear's favor, but... It is meaningful that DK Crew gets that Dragoon going heavy. Yeah, he's going to slam dunk, baby. Fear Dragoon. Fear his Darius. Bot tower taken with plate still on it by Blaze. A couple of plates taken top. And I love seeing Dragoon get Darius. He is just too good on this champion. You see exactly how this play turned out. And we're a disaster struck. Yeah, Th this is where so they lose track of Savage. They have an early ward in the river, but they don't really respect it. No flash, no arcane shift to get away from that bubble. And at this point, it looks like Sketch is okay, but look at Savage. Realizes that he can just flash past Blaze and look for that play. And this is where things were getting so close. Savage goes in, finds the bubble, but a massive karma queue. Trickster trying his best, though. The stopwatch is really the saving grace. They still get the kill thanks to a great laser from Blaze. Savage is playing his heart out in this game. He is trying his best to keep his team in it, keep his team at arm's reach, but Trickster has something to say about that. Yeah, he is Savage going down, and it is a solo kill as the Hounds were looking to just get into that bot lane. Now it is Dragoon who might be in a tricky spot, but he's 3 0 and 1. I don't know if this is somebody you can reliably tower dive. Yeah, I don't think there's any world they kill him under the turret, especially because he cleared out that wave, which means now mid lane tower chip for fear, second dragon of the game for fear, and they're able to steal away the enemy bottom side jungle. So everything so far going in Cincinnati Fear's favor, they've got themselves almost a 5,000 gold lead. This feels like 
travesty, a polar opposite of game two, right? A very similar flow where it's a one-sided early game. It's very like jungle focused. A lot of plays made by the jungler. Trickster's just everywhere. Every time we pan our camera to a play, Trickster is there. It, it, it really does feel like, oh my God, Lawrence is in a bad way yet again. The dunk is there. It's a kill, <laughs> Dragoon. Finding another solo kill. Oh Old no! From shorter ace, but he just leaves the vision. Can't find a kill. It might be better that he didn't because Sketch is right there waiting. Dragoon knows his limits on Darius perfectly. I feel like any other Darius in that situation backs off because they feel like Lawrence can actually find the counter kill. But Dragoon knows that he can tank exactly that amount of damage, and he does exactly that amount of damage. That is the advantage of being a former one-trick pony on a champion. You know their limits. You know their ins and outs. And that is what is so impressive from Dragoon in this game. He had a great game one. He had a pretty good game two. And he is having a stellar game three. Yes, absolutely is. And showing why he's a valuable prospect, right? He won qualifier number two last season and also was the uh, scouting grounds champion for top lane as yeah, you can see ones. right now blaze getting jumped onto now oh no short a, a good amount of damage uh blaze is oh, running for his life but his life cannot be extended any further than it is now the hounds are getting turned around dk crew looking to swing through some vines trying to see if they can close the gap trits their sketch Tighten this out beautifully. Nice tether from Flux. Stops Shorter Ace from going any further. This karma has been so hard to deal with, but we'll go night, night. Flux gets out of harm's Ooh. way. The Berserk comes into play. Paranoia is there, and you can see they're trying to close the gap. But two members drop from Cincinnati Fear in the top side. You've got no Dragoon. You lost Blaze as well in the river. I don't really know why they were even flirting with the idea of turning that play around. They could have just left, right? But we saw Plux continuously re-engage that, keep them on a string, and try to maybe toy with them, play with his food a little bit, and it just backfired. That's three kills over to Cincinnati Fear, a couple of shutdowns as well along the way, and the gold lead is still 5,000. There are still true dragons to zero, but that's not gold you needed to give over. Yeah, yeah, yeah. On the bright side of things, to look at the silver lining, shutdowns were not ground, right? Like, that is a big one. Tritster didn't drop there, and Dragoon's the big shutdown. He wasn't yes. anywhere around in that play, so big to see. But you can see exactly where things start to go wrong here. Yeah, look, you see Plux keeping the tether on Shorter Race, and this is where they can just leave. They could have just walked away. Maybe only Plux dies, but they sort of flirt with this idea of getting a big re-engage, of fighting three versus five. Maybe Dragoon is potentially calming that he's walking up the river, but they're just on different wavelengths as a team. They've got this idea that they can turn around the fight, but it's just simply not going to happen. And because of that, they lose a couple of lives that maybe they did not need to lose, but... Regardless, they are still well and truly in the lead this game. Like we see, 5,000 gold lead, one minute until third dragon. I don't see any way DK crew can find their way into the bottom side river for this dragon. Yeah, I mean, dragon's going to take this top tower, right? Like, yeah. <laughs> that tower is not long for the world. It is barely breathing. It is on a ventilator right now. And you can see immediately the reaction. DK Crew's like, hold on, we, we gotta get over there. We gotta save this thing. They'll be able to save it for now, but breathe on it and it's gone, man. Exactly. That tower is just one or two auto attacks away from falling. Sketch, though, kind of quietly farming up this game. Hasn't really had a big, big game outside of a couple of nice plays in the bot lane, but... He's got himself 153 CS, three kills. He's very close to hitting a, a very strong two-item spike, completing that mana immune. And over on the other side, it really does feel like Savage is the hope for DK Crew. He has two items. He's got himself enough damage to look for one-shots onto the majority of fear. But I don't see a world in which he can find access to the river, to the jungle, to get those picks happening. This is going to be an interesting dance. You can see, actually, DK Crew might be looking to possibly trade Dragon for Baron. It's not up for another 30 seconds, so they immediately go right back to the mid lane. 
they immediately were hovering over it. I had to look at the timer. I was like, are they going to race this? But there is yeah. not the timer in their favor. Yeah, not quite in their favor. Solo Dragon over to Trickster. That's three Drakes. Cloud Soul, sure, it's not the kind of soul that's going to instantly win you the game, but it certainly is helpful on champions like Darius, Ezreal. I, honestly, the entirety of Cincinnati Fear's composition uses Cloud Soul quite well, and they've got a five-minute timer on this Cloud Soul trying to finish up any last items, and they might even focus towards the Baron before Cloud Soul even spawns. Yeah. This is a scary situation. DK crew looking to farm up a bit. They do have some key members that have been able to get a nice bit of farm for themselves. Uh, most notably, Savage, somebody to highlight, as them on the Zoe have been phenomenal. They have been doing a great job using these Sleepy Trouble Bubbles to find angles to pop people. It's been great moments for Savage to find these moments that Cincinnati Fear has clawed their way back in. And you can even see in total damage, it is Savage who is leading the way for in this game. It is just a matter yeah. of he has to get this damage down in the vital times. That's a great point. I would not have expected Savage to lead the damage charts, but he has been playing very well on Zoe so far this game. He is getting out farmed by Blaze, which means that Blaze will likely hit some item spikes earlier. But Savage has the damage within his kit currently to one-shot basically all of fear besides maybe dragoon but oh, sketch Trace. going forward he's got a lot of damage onto him but it's the renata who drops savage looking for somebody over here onto the side cannot find trister but trister looking to find him he jumps out the mist and that's a jump scare Ooh. savage doesn't want to deal with as it will be trister on the sign they go back and as you were talking about it just a moment ago it's fear who have put their eyes onto the baron it has been started up. Schroeder Ace has the ultimate, but no vision is there. Yeah, you've got ultimate from Shorter Ace. Lawrence's ultimate as well to provide vision. Poke from Savage over the top. Can no, he paranoia. steal it? He's going for oh, it. No, Dragoon. that's going to be Dragoon who secures it. And now Nocturne is off the map. Lawrence has to watch out, but Plutz cannot finish off the tether. And Savage, let's get caught up. He is not in the bush. Oh. You're going to be able to see him all. Oh. Wow. This game kind of just blew open there. I think getting Baron there for Cincinnati Fear might be the nail in the coffin for DK Crew and their hopes in this first Proving Grounds tournament of the summer split because look at that gold lead, Travesty. The gold lead is 8,000. Baron will be up while Dragon Soul spawning, which means that you're basically confirmed to get that. Look at the game Trickster is having himself. We pointed him out as sort of a weak point in game one and game two. And he heard us, and he is turning it around in game three. He absolutely is. And this is what you love to see. You love early legends to see those bounce backs, to see the mental resilience of these players, especially in these best of three series, man. This is what we come here for. And you're seeing why Tritzer is one of those prospects you have to keep your eyes out for as Savage going in. True Shot Barrage finds him. Could be another fight. Savage looking for his mark. The paranoia comes in. Shorter he goes Ace. in deep. Shorter Ace looking for the play, but his HP bar is so low. Trying to see who he can make go berserk. Plutz is at half HP. Lawrence is in the midst of them all. They don't Sketch have Dragoon. Coming around with the flank on the side. Dragoon has just got one thing on mind. He's a one-track mind. He wants the game, baby. He is popping out towers, and now he is just racing against the members. Savage is sure to drop as Sketch catches him off the side with the hope inhibitor will fall as Dragoon is uncontested. The rest of the members of Fear are doing everything they can to make sure they got nowhere to run. And it's Blade oh, continuing. Wow. It is just everything going Fear's way. And they are going to punch their ticket in to the next round. Cincinnati Fear with an unbelievable bounce back in game three. They got Goomba stomped in game two by DK Crew, but they say to heck with the fan favorites and they take game three. 24 minutes in, Cincinnati Fear continue to spread fear in proving grounds as they are the ones coming out on top. Wow. Travesty, I did not expect game three to go like that. What? So ever. That was so one sided. They were up four, five thousand gold. It didn't feel like it was going to be over. And then they get the Baron and they're up six thousand gold. And then they win one team fight. 
and the game is over within a minute. Like, what happened at the end of that game that was so fast? Uh, something that was so fast. Okay, uh, Darius demolishing your base. <laughs> <laughs> like, like Dragoon, Dragoon got to have a fantastic Darius game. We got to see him revisit his glory days as a, a former Darius one trick and was popping off in the game and even then, it was also just Tritzer having a fantastic game. You can see it in the post game. I like Tritzer had a phenomenal game inside of that. And even at the end there, like Tritzer had the most gold in the game, but yet again, Victor popping off Blaze showing why this champion is so disgustingly good. Yeah, I really love Fear's adaptation in that draft to prioritize the Victor because that was the focal point of every win in this series. Victor won game one and three with Fear, and then Victor won game two with DK Crew. So the fact that they were able to recognize that and make that adaptation and draft just goes to show the prowess that not only the players have, but the but the staff as well for Fear. Yeah, absolutely, but we are going to take ourselves a short little break. We got some player interviews coming up. I believe we are going to be with a, a very valuable prospect in the name of Dragoon for our interview. So we're going to take a short break. And when we come back, we'll be going right into that. Welcome back, everybody. I'm joined by the top laner of the winning team, Dragoon. How you feeling after that game, man? Pretty good. Pretty good. I mean, any win feels pretty awesome, you know? Yeah, for sure, for sure. Okay, so we have to start here. The end to that last game three was intense and it was down to the wire. Walk me through what's happening from your perspective. What were comms like? What were you thinking in that in those final couple of minutes? I mean, I kind of just said I'll take their base if I'm left by myself. I know I can 1v2, probably 1v3, like any combination of their champs if I have both my sums, which I did. So I kind of just told my team, don't give them a play, don't die. And uh, I mean, when a nocturnal happens, I'm kind of just like, you know, I just hope my team is living. Yeah. Uh, I mean, eventually it's just they live the nocturnal, and at that point, it's just like, you know, stall their bases. And I mean, as soon as we killed one of them and none of us died, I mean, the game was over, right? So for this series, I think it's safe to say that you played yourself a heck of a series, right? You started on the Gwen and you played very well. Wukong, sure, the game didn't go your way, but mm -hmm. you were pivotal in the couple of fights that you guys won. And then obviously you capped it off with your signature Darius. Right. What has your evolution as an amateur top laner been like? Because you're showing a lot of different styles now that I think you really weren't showing before. A lot of different champions, different play styles. What has it been like over the past couple of years? Um, I think I started off as, uh, I mean, obviously I've always had Darius in my pool. I mean... It's kind of hard to shake off like the little bit of one trick yeah. bias. I'm not a one trick, guys. I'm not a one trick. <laughs> um, I did start off my like amateur competitive career playing like tanks because I remember my very first time playing like amateur was just like, is just like the typical, yeah, you know, it's just five guys. They don't even scrim, they just play on the whatever. <laughs> like, I, it wasn't called unified back then. I forgot. Upsurge. It's Upsurge, just like, you know, yeah. you just play on tourney day, no scrim, you just show up. I remember that Orn was like, super broken, like it was like on release, and I just played like Orn for like like seven games in a row, and it's just like <laughs> it's just, like we weren't even scrimming, like it was just like super informal, and I kind of like stuck with that style because I wasn't like super set out on going pro for a while, and then as I became more serious about it, you know, I added other picks like you know, my Gangplank, you know, Camille, etc. I mean, I play a lot more carry champs nowadays. Yeah, for sure. And I think it shows, right? You you are one of those amateur top laners that a lot of people peg as being one of the next up to get that academy call out or to get that affiliate team call out. Um, one thing I want to ask you is you and sort of the core of this team have been together for a bit now. And mm -hmm. you guys have sort of been grinding through amateur looking for that next big opportunity. What has it been like, your experience over the past few months, over the past split or two, kind of grinding the amateur scene with these guys, trying to make a name for yourself? I mean, it's been pretty fun, honestly. Uh, I love playing with Blaze and Plux. Those are the two teammates I kept from no team. Shout out to Blaze. Bro just said, pick me big there in game three. I mean, hey, <laughs> I mean, you always like that, right? Yeah, um, he carried. Honestly, it's been kind of a grind uh it's always kind of like the goal is always beating teams like 100x and uh egp 
And we didn't really get that last split, really, especially versus 100X. Um, we got pretty close against EGP, but we really wanted to take it out 100X. And that's kind of just like, you just keep grinding out amateur and you just try to take out the best competitor, right? And eventually we're at the top, right? And then you yeah. get to PG and then the next competitor is just an academy team. And it's just like, who can you take down next? That's what it always is, right? Yeah. What top laner can you stomp an academy and take their spot? That's kind of just what it is at the end of the day in amateur with proving grounds. I love that mindset, man. That That is such a good competitive mindset to bring. What are your thoughts going into playoffs? You guys have um, not quite qualified for the playoffs, but you've kept your tournament lives alive. So, you know, going into this last round, potentially playoffs, what are you guys thinking for this first tournament? Um, I think that... I'm pretty sure we have to beat the loser of Maryville 100X to qualify in the playoffs. Yes. I think it's pretty doable. Um, I think, personally, I think 100X will win this uh, series. I think it's going on yeah. right now, actually, on the Academy channel. Um, yes, it is. I do think we can beat Maryville. We almost beat them last time. It was pretty darn close. Um, I think 100X, we probably won't go against them. But I think we have a really good chance. I mean... We're just going to take the next week to just grind it out, get some good scrims, and we're going to come back with something that will just, we'll 2 -0. Heck yeah, can. man. I love that. I love that. I'll be making sure to watch your guys' game because, yeah, like you said, Maryville versus 100X decides your opponent, and that will be decided within the next hour or two. So super exciting yeah. stuff. Any final shout-outs, any final words before we head to the desk? Ban my Darius. <laughs> uh, that's not really a shout out but it's just like ban my darius man i literally said i don't care what he picks just pick me darius like it's it's game three it's open in first three he answered his top laner and i'm like just give me darius it's fine uh shout outs i mean obviously i'm gonna shout out the entirety of my team uh they kind of kept together after a loss um you know that's always kind of respected coaching staff uh i'm actually gonna shout out you know our main our head coach is julius and he's kind of yeah. been with us but uh, a little bit in the shadows in, is uh, Shia, and he kind of does not work in the same time zone as. He's kind of like the the coach of the night, you know. His his, his hours <laughs> are like kind of weird, man. It's like it's like midnight to like two p.m. and it's kind of weird. But he's kind of like he's he's really good one on one, and he's been helping me a lot in the past couple of weeks. And he's been helping out everybody. I think he's been really helping out Blaze in particular. I always see them on the one on one sessions. Awesome. I love to hear it, man. Well, thanks for joining us and best of leak and uh, best of luck in your match next week. Thank you. Thank you. What a fantastic interview. I, I love Dragoon's mindset of just being like, yo, it's it, I'm just going to consume the net's best top laner and I'm just going <laughs> to show everybody how good he is. I love that. <laughs> yeah, it's such a such a healthy competitive mindset that you that's like the pinnacle of the amateur mindset right like i'm just gonna beat people who are better than me <laughs> and i'm just gonna show you guys that you're wrong for picking them and you should pick me i, I freaking love that mindset yeah absolutely and hey look shout outs to them fear gets to go onto the other line fear stays alive inside of yeah. breeding grounds it doesn't mean that we have to we had to say goodbye to uh the dk crew which i know a lot of people are very sad about including uh myself as their, yeah you can still cut your banana <laughs> <laughs> uh my, my, mine is mine is gone i slipped on the pill so uh that's gone but <laughs> it's it was great to get to see him 30 second seed all the way to here so they definitely can't be upset yes. about the performance and have one of the hardest groups out there with such a stacked group and 100 these nets and maryville going on on the, over the side it's going to determine who fear has to go against nets yeah, I do think, I, I think I agree with Dragoon that I think 100X is going to win the series. And then it's going to be a very close to decide who's the second seed between Maryville and Cincinnati Fear. I could really see it going either way after today's games. I, I'm right there with you. I think everybody on Cincinnati Fear is just a valuable prospect, right? Like every team should be keeping their eyes on this squad of players because uh, they, they will absolutely do it. And uh, we do have to look at the predictions. Um, they're not in my favor. Uh, <laughs> 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 um so on the bright side i i if 100 things win i get one right <laughs> but hey we take that we take that it, yo i might go four for four today let's yeah, go yeah you might you might just go four for four which will get you further away from me i i ended up having to vote against fear i was 
thinking about it. I was 50 50, uh, but then their coach uh, mugged me in an ARAM. And so that, that led to my ultimate decision. Uh, <laughs> that was the tiebreaker for me, but <laughs> it was definitely a, just a great day of games, man. Honestly, even like over on the other side, Taco Gaming was almost bringing Taco Tuesday to EGP, which a lot of people were thinking, hey, this might be the, uh, the next big thing. So. So much fun, man. So, I, I've loved the past two weeks covering with you. It's just been a blast. Absolutely. Same with you, man. And hey, yo, not just with you, not just with me. We got our sponsors here as well. They make sure everything is possible. So thank you to them, Atlantic Hyperheads and Zowie, for making sure that we can bring the hottest and the best of amateur action here on the Path to LCS channel. We can always catch the most phenomenal amateur action. You got anything you would like to say before we send it off for tonight in MLBD? Well, you know, just thank you to Unified for bringing me on. I had such a blast covering these games with you. I had such a blast telling the player stories. And, you know, most of all, just make sure that you guys sub to the Path to LCS channel. Keep tuning in to see how this first Proving Grounds tournament of the summer pans out because there are so many competitive teams, so many amazing players, so many stories to tell, and we've got some amazing people to tell them. Absolutely. So thank you to MLBD. Thank you to our production staff and our observers for being Smurf as always. And with that being said, my name is Travis C. I am signing off for tonight. I am a skater boy. And I said, I'll see you later, boy. Have a good night.